been several years since we've actually had a winter season that's delivered a knockout blow. So this year we've been diving deep into the data. The full WTL 11 weather team has been analyzing the more complex weather patterns to indicate what's on tap for this upcoming winter season. And it is fitting today in a day that uh, saw the first snowflakes of the season that we're going to be talking winter weather. But the question is, will this winter season bring piles of snow back into the area? We are ready to talk the 2024 2025 winter weather outlook and is certain to captivate your attention going forward. So what does the data say? One thing that we're going to be looking at, it is the opposite pattern of what occurred last winter season where we had an historically strong El Nino this year. It is going to be a La Nina winter pattern. Now the question is, is that going to be a big player in this year's winter weather forecast? Well, I think there's going to be so much more to that story and we are ready to dive into that. Now let me give you a little perspective on this. The past two winters in a row have now made the top five list for the least snowiest winters that we've ever seen in recorded history, including last year's winter. You remember that one about nine and a half inches of snow. It was by far the least snowiest winter season that we have ever seen on record. So that is part of our climate trend. Warmer winters have meant less snowfall over the past decade. Now last winter, it was one of the warmest winters we've ever endured. December was nearly nine degrees above average. In fact, all winter long, we saw temperatures that were several degrees above average and that resulted in snowfall that was well below average. Now our winter weather forecast, it is going to hinge on this. The month of January. Historically, that is the month that offers us the most snowfall, at least based on climate. We average about 12 inches of snowfall in the month of January. Now, here's a climate fact for you. Nine of the past 10 Januaries have been below average with snowfall. We typically average about 37 and a half inches per year. If we see a January that fails to turn yet again this year, it is likely to be another warmer than average winter. So what does the data say? We are expecting a La Nina winter. That is the opposite phase of what we had last year, but it's a weaker La Nina. This can favor a colder and snowier winter season, but I'll caution you on this. It depends on the strength of the La Nina and the location of the La Nina. And we firmly believe here in the WTO 11 Weather Center that this is not going to be much of a factor this winter season. Let me explain what it is, though. It is cooler than average equatorial Pacific waters off the coast of South America. Why that matters? It modifies the jet stream. So let me highlight what are the top seven influences in our weather season as we go forward into December, January and February. It can have influence from Siberian and Canadian snow cover, our Great Lakes and our ice cover. Any winter season really can be defined by hitting on the big one. Could we just get one storm that offers a memorable uh, winter? That is a possibility in any season. Now there are connections between the Arctic, the Atlantic, and the Pacific Oceans. How about this as well? The polar vortex. That is something I'm going to dive deeper into and how that could impact our winter season. A general warming climate and the impacts from a La Nina or an El Nino winter season. So let's get deeper into the data. Let's talk snow cover. Now there is some snow that's falling very gently across the area, but generally it is well below average up into Canada. So we have to look all the way across the globe into Siberia. This could be a breeding ground where there is above average snowpack for late season cold. If we get the bright atmospheric flow across the polar regions, we'll watch that for late January and into February. Also, the polar vortex. All indications are right now this is expected to remain stronger or in a stable phase that keeps the Arctic air locked all the way up into the North Pole. When it's a strong stable phase, the Arctic air just doesn't make its way down into the Great Lakes or the eastern coast. Should we get disruptions in that polar vortex or a weaker phase that results in that Arctic air spilling out into the Great Lakes region? We would expect if that occurs, it's not till January or into February for a turn toward the middle of winter. Now, hang on here. We're going to dive deep into this one. Something called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Look over toward the Pacific Ocean. Very warm ocean waters. This modifies the jet stream across the Pacific Ocean. It is a negative phase right now, similar to last winter. And here's the atmospheric flow when that occurs. A blocking high pressure system off the coast of Alaska takes the jet stream to the north, allows more active 
weather to the Pacific Northwest and the northern tier of the country. That generally leads to a more mild feeling of weather as we go across the eastern half of the United States and including the Great Lakes region. So let's get into my forecast here. It's going to mirror this very close. Warmer than average weather is going to be expected into the winter season, especially across the Great Lakes, southeast and east coast. But look very close. That polar jet stream just to the northwest, that may result in a more active pattern into the winter season. Now, that could lead to above average precipitation. Again, even though we're warmer than average, that may not equate, though, to above average snowfall. Similar to last winter, that above average precipitation may be more in the form of wet weather or rain. So the official forecast going forward here, our winter temperatures, they're expected to be above average, and it may be several degrees above average. So warmer than average winter season, our winter snowfall, do you remember the average? about 37 and a half inches of snow. We're expecting another winter that will be below average with snowfall. We'll give you a range of about 20 to 28 inches of snow as we go into the winter season. That would make yet another winter of below average snowfall. Once again, it's going to hinge on the month of January. If we can get some of those colder outbreaks of air from that polar vortex, it could turn the winter season a little colder January and into February. That is your winter weather forecast of what to expect going forward for this winter season.